Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. I have so many wonderful plans for July. As it stands right now, I don't have any vacations planned. I don't have any company coming into town. We've got a holiday, which means like no one goes to work. Um, and it's really hot outside. <laughs> so I imagine I'm gonna be inside a lot um, doing a lot of sewing. Not to mention, I just got back from New York City where I did my epic fabric shopping. Um, I say it's for the year, but I end up buying stuff throughout the year anyways. It's just, it's just my thing is buying fabric. Um, so I've got a lot of new stuff, new stuff that I want to get to sewing really, really quickly. I've got some ideas that were immediate. As soon as I saw the fabric, I knew that's I knew what it would be. So those are the things I'm going to start with first. And then I'll figure out the other stuff um, as time goes on. I imagine this will take me a whole year to sew up the 20 some, almost 30 fabrics that I got while I was up there. Um, but they're all great and I love them all and I'm really, really excited to get started. So um, let's start with um, some of those. So I went to this store called Grayline Linen. It was my very first time there and all they sell is linen. And I love a store that specializes in something because they really do get the best of the best. Um, so I found this gorgeous like grass green, Granny Smith apple green linen. It's got a really soft hand to it. This has already been pre-washed one time. Um, P.S. I saw you guys' comments about washing it in Coke like Coca-Cola. Um, I'm a little nervous to try that on a whole piece, but I might um, cut off a swatch and compare because I have a swatch from before I pre-washed it at all. I'll have a plain swatch after washing it one time in regular detergent, and then I'll have a third swatch after washing it in Coca-Cola. Um, so maybe that'll be a fun experiment to share with you guys as well. I've never heard that before. And apparently you can't use Pepsi. You have to use Coke. So um, I'll do a little bit more research and see if I can do a little pre-wash experiment on linen. Apparently it also works on denim, if you have denim. Anyways, so when I saw these linens, um, I kind of had in my mind that I wanted to find a really great linen um, for Mimi G's Jessica dress. So it's the free pattern that she has whenever you sign up for her newsletter. Basically, it is a button front dress, sweetheart neckline, spaghetti straps, uh, waist seam. That's pretty much, pretty much it. So I got this to make that, and I think it's going to be really great. I have been seeing that style of dress everywhere from my Instagram feed, like advertising from stores, um, other people on Instagram, people on the street, um, in stores, in person, I've been seeing that style dress everywhere. It's kind of 90s, um, but kind of modern too. It's like, you know, a retro look that can fit in today too. Um, so I'm excited to make that. And I think this color is just perfect. They had so many colors to choose from and this green just really, really spoke to me. So I'm excited about this. Um, then I have the Sew My Style pattern for July is like the Lander Pant and also maybe Flint Plant, Flint, Megan Nielsen Flint. It's two different kinds of pants and no. That's just not going to happen. I'm still not at a place where I am making pants and I'm certainly not going to buy a pattern um, for like a fitted pant where you have to worry about like crotch length, crotch depth, all of that. Like I can get away with the goji shorts from um, Deer and Joe because none of that really matters. They're so voluminous and baggy that it's fine. So that's kind of where my mind went when I heard that there were pants for so my style. I said, okay, I can make pants, but they're not going to be fitted through the waist and the hip. That's just not going to happen. Instead, I want to make palazzo pants where they're, you know, the waistband fits and then they're voluminous everywhere else. I've been seeing them on celebrities a ton um, with either like body suits or crop tops. I'm not sure I'm going to wear it with a crop top, but, um, just really form fitting, um, 
top and then this big voluminous pants on bottom. So the fabric I got for that, and I hope that it shows up well, is this, it's a stripe. Um, it's 100% cotton and it is like crinkled kind of already. Um, it's very lightweight. Here's what one piece, like one layer looks like. Um, so I think it'll be nice and breathable so I could still technically wear it in the summer with like a black tank top and black flats. I think that would be really cute. Um, and I just think that it would drape nicely but also still hold the shape of the voluminous, voluminous pant leg. Um, I don't have a pattern in my stash that is what I see in my mind, but I do have um, McCall 7789, which has a huge pant. Um, and because this is a created pattern, all the pieces are kind of separate. So I'm thinking that I could just modify this waistband to make it narrower and these would work. Um, so that's kind of my plan right now. If I get nervous about that, then I will um, find another pattern. I'm sure these Palazzo pants are kind of a dime a dozen in the pattern world. So tentatively, the pants from this pattern out of this for So My Style. But speaking of this, this is not going away just yet because I am obsessed with this pattern. However, this little tie number here and what it's doing to her under boob, I'm not obsessed with. But I feel like I can modify this to make view, whatever view this is, I guess that's three, the top of three and the pants of four, and then modify that little middle section of the uh, bodice to convert it not convert it into a tie, but to like make a mock tie. I think because I looked at the pattern pieces and this, this bust piece and the tie is all one. So when you go, so like if you untied it, you would be naked. You know what I'm saying? Um, and when you go to tie it, I mean, that's only going to provide so much support. But I think that if you made number three, three bodice number three that has like the princess seams and like you know the actual you know under bust seam and then did a little mock tie it would at least give the illusion of it being more supportive and more fitted you could certainly add underwire or boning or any of a myriad of things to make it a little bit more stable so i'm probably going to play around with that some but i do love this pattern and i do want to make it work um, the fabric that I got, again, this came from Grey Line Linen, and I don't know, when I saw it, I just thought of this jumpsuit. Um, it is red stripe with like a white cross green kind of going through it. Um, so that is going to be the fabric, which I think would be really cute, very Americana, very patriotic. I think I might turn the stripes long ways for the pants. Um, I, I still got a little bit of thinking through to do on this one, but um, I am very excited about it and I think it will be super cute um, once I get it all sorted out. But hopefully I can get it sorted out this month <laughs> so that I can wear it before it starts to cool off because this is a, just a very summertime look. You know, I don't, I don't know that I would pull this off that much in the fall. Maybe with a jean jacket um, for a few months. But so anyways, excited about this one as well. 7789 from McCall's. Okay, so now we are at the point of the video where I talk about my refashions. Um, refashioning is something, it's like a challenge of mine this month or this year. And I want to do one refashion a month. So far, I've done one every month, but I miss June. So I'm um, going to try and make up for that and do two of them this month. And they are quick. They are easy. So that should not be a problem. I should probably be able to bang out both of these in one day. Um, that's how quick they are. But 
Um, the first one is what I was talking, I mentioned it in my plans video in June. I'm not going to change my plan. Um, I did get started because I cut this off. <laughs> the shearing from the top of the dress, I cut off. Um, this is just an ITY knit. There's really nothing special about it. Just a fun abstract fabric. Um, so now I've got a giant tube. You can see just one big tube. So I'm going to cut that into a top. Um, I was thinking of something like the Ogden cami, some kind of like camisole that I can um, wear with jeans or shorts and then put a jacket over for when it gets cooler out. Um, something simple and basic out of this. The one that I picked for July is a similar concept in that the dress is like a shirred top maxi, same as this one was, um, except this is woven. This is some kind of cotton, nothing special, very, very basic. But it does also come with an underlining piece. So I actually have two layers to this one to work with. So I might try and play that up. I picked up McCall 7411, which is this top here. Um, I love View E that has the scalloped hem. Um, it's two layers of scallops, so that's how I would be able to incorporate the under layer. I mean, it's not, let's see the difference. Let's see, let's see. So, well now, okay, so the outer layer is like a little bit lighter, a little bit more sheer, and the under layer is more like a broadcloth, but they're not that different. Um, and so I think, well, they're different colors. I don't know why that is. I guess one faded and one didn't. Um, but can you guys even tell a difference there between this and this? I don't know, so that could be cool, but then if I decide that I don't like that, then I could always just make View B, which is a basic tank. Um, it has high-low hem, rounded, nothing fancy, no big deal, but it would be like a great go-to top for 110 degree days like we're having in this heat wave. Um, and again, I could, like the other one, I could easily put a little jacket over it and wear it multi-season. So it's just a good layering, good basic, um, tank. So McCall 7411. Okay, and in the world of non-garment sewing, I have decided that it's time to make another quilt. So I have the Cricut Maker. As you guys know, you've seen my projects with the Cricut Maker. They have been really driving home the fact that it makes it a gajillion times easier to sew a quilt with the Cricut Maker because it cuts out all of your pieces for you. And so I thought, okay, let's put that to the test. Um, they also have a collaboration with Riley Blake where you can buy a kit, a fabric kit. So you can see I have all of the fabrics here. Um, and you buy a kit and then you can pair it with um, any of these, can y'all see any of these quilt patterns? and you have enough fabric in here to make one of them. Um, or I'm sure you can make other ones too. You just have to double check that you're using the right fabric for the right section. Anyways, it's supposed to be super, super easy and super, super quick um, because all the cutting is done for you and you kind of just push the buttons and let it go to town and they're very accurate and you don't have, I mean, when I sewed my first quilt, that was the hardest part was getting all the layers right and getting them cut right and getting those corners just perfect and I'm not great with a rotary cutter so I thought okay if I'm going to try it again this is how I'm going to do it. So I've got all these to make. I will be recording my progress um, breaking it up into three videos so you guys will see a couple of them in July and then the final one will go live in August. So you know, be sure to follow along with that. But I thought the fabrics were super cute. It has like this little baby pink gingham and some red and some aqua. So I'm excited about how this is going to turn out. So baby size, it's not gonna be huge. Um, so hopefully it will turn out okay.
But those are my plans for July. I, as always, want to know what you guys are making too. Let me know what you've got on your list for this month. Um, maybe you'll inspire me and I can add it to my list for August. I've got a ton of fabric to get through, so I need some ideas. <laughs> um, but until next time, I will see you all very soon. Bye!